In this video, we are going to talk a little bit about international finance and the key elements that need to be considered when doing business abroad. Now, there are a lot of different things, management issues, cultural issues, legal issues. We're gonna talk about the key financial uh, things to always have to keep an eye on when doing business in a different country. Uh, some topics we're gonna to cover is uh, exchange rates and trading, international monetary systems, interest rates uh, can be included on the list, uh, deals about the financial markets and other features. Uh, cross rate, it's dealing with exchange rates. So you're already familiar with, okay, the dollar to the British pound, the dollar to the Euro, et cetera. But um, they may be currencies that do not have a direct quote or, uh, or an indirect quote for that matter, uh, but they're not, they're not paired, let me put it that way. And so what you can do is two currencies that may not be paired, but they are listed against the dollar, for example. And it could be another currency, we just use the dollar in this case. So by knowing the exchange rate of each one of them with the dollar, you can then calculate the exchange rate between them two. And that's uh, just an extra step in the calculation. And that's what we call cross rate. Now exchange rate risk, it's a big thing when dealing in international business. And in a nutshell, uh, what it is, is you enter in a contract, for example, with another country and agree a set of payment. Now, if you are, let's say, buying the product from another country, you're gonna import it. And let's say you agree for the payments in the contract to be in their currency. So you're gonna to have to pay that amount in their currency, regardless of the exchange rate. So if the exchange rate floats or changes, as it's floating, it changes, it could work in your favor or it could work against you where you end up paying more for the same product because when you convert it, you may require more or less dollars depending on the, on the case. So there's risk to it. Um, here we are gonna talk about some vocabulary, spot rates and forward rates, similar to options and contracts, uh, spot, would be uh, by contract, I mean future contracts and forward contracts. Spot rate is like right now, the market number, whatever is currently happening, and then forward rates will be something in the future uh, th there, uh, that you can use to write contracts, hedge, et cetera. Uh, another vocabulary term, purchasing power parity. So the idea is that a product will cost you the same regardless of where it is in the world. Now I know uh, prices change and all vary, but to get, try to, uh, it, can be, it can get very complex, but to try to do uh, a simple example, what happens is let's say in another, uh, some item, item X costs this much in the United States. And in some other country, it may appear to be, let's say at a lower price. So you think, oh, let me buy another country. But then after you go through uh, shipping costs, importing, potential taxation issues, and all kinds of other transaction costs, you end up paying the same. Now, and what it means here, which you see in the slide, is that if that power, uh, purchasing power parity starts going off, because as an average, of course, then the exchange rates are going to start adjusting as they go. And uh, one way to look at it is supply and demand. If something starts being cheaper in a different country, people are going to start buying it from the other country. But as they're buying it, there's this demand that is going for that currency and that product. So the price of the product is going to start going up and the currency is going to start, the exchange is going to start to change because of that supply and demand of that currency. And while you may catch some difference in prices, it won't last. 
uh, because of those uh, things. And those are there's a lot more things at play. But as an example, what happens that the exchange rate will adjust to make sure that still uh, you know balances out. Other things that we can talk about is inflation and interest rates. Uh, okay, so let's say country B uh, wants to lower inflation. So then they lower interest rates. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, vice versa. So if inflation is going up and they want to lower it, one way to do is to uh, increase interest rates. But then as the inflation is going down, interest rates will go down with it. So then uh, countries that deal international or even just anybody is looking for uh, uh, low cost money, access to capital, they may be interested in borrowing in different countries. But what happens is that there is a direct uh, influence that interest rates and currency have on each other. So as you see then in the long term, it may not, it may not work because in the currency valuation versus the interest rates, uh, <clears throat> they balance out the act. So, and uh, one more thing, uh, as you may have seen in many of your other finance classes, uh, you do uh, capital budgeting and capital decisions or decisions based on capital budgeting, where you calculate MPV and uh, you choose the project or not. So when you are doing an international project, it's a similar, very similar process of calculating MPV, but then you have to put in there some uh, exchange rate risk, uh, potential interest rate risks, depending on the project. And when you include those in the calculation, it will adjust the cash flows, the value of the cash flows, and you may end up with a different MPV that you wouldn't have um, if it was a domestic project. So the short version of this, it's still an MPV calculation of cash flows. You're just including exchange rate risk and fluctuations in the calculation. We will stop the video here. That was a quick overview of some key elements uh, that we're covering in this session.